Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Screencast Lecture Series. Today we're going to talk about the very important concept in geology of the theory of plate tectonics. So here we go. I'm sure you're as excited as I am to go on this exciting journey. The first term we're going to need to understand in plate tectonics is the word plates. Now, of course, you're familiar with the word plate, but in this case, it means something a little bit different. And if you take a look at world maps, you see independent continents, and those continents seem pretty stable. They seem pretty secure. And then they have water in between. And what you might not know is that the Earth's crust is actually broken into several different plates. Now, these plates are actually big pieces of crust that are cracked and broken, and they are individual pieces of crust. They are varied in sizes. You have very, very large ones, like where we live on the North American plate, the Eurasian plate. Those are all quite large. And then we, of course, have some smaller ones, that the Nazca Plate, the Indian Plate. They're smaller, but they're also very important. They do create some very interesting geological uh, effects. And we live on the North American Plate. Now, here's a picture of a football field, and these are the out-of-bounds lines. And they, are off, they can be called the boundaries. That's why it's out-of-bounds. These are the boundaries. These, this is the edge of the field. And hey, this is my little buddy. Now remember, our students said that they wanted you to not be distracting during this thing. Yeah. So what do you have? To, what do you have to say to our viewing audience? I'm sorry. Say it into the say it in the microphone. I'm sorry. I wasn't even. I know you've been very good. So just keep it up, and we will continue to do our lecture. So just like uh, the edge of the field is known as the boundaries, the edge of the plates are known as boundaries also. These are called the plate boundaries. And these plates are all able to move, and you know that, that they are able to move. So just a real quick review, what is the mechanism that causes plates to move? What allows these plates to move? Well, you should know that it is seafloor spreading. That's right. Seafloor spreading can, uh, causes the plates to move. Well, I'm going to assume that you knew a seafloor spreading. Like I said, like a door of the Explorer. They always assume you got it right. They're like, yay, good job. And, yeah, you got it right. I mean, you could have said anything. I don't know. You're at home. I'm here. So what is plate tectonics? So this goes back to our very beginning. What is plate tectonics? Well, here's the definition. Plate tectonics is the idea, the theory, that plates of Earth's crust move like a raft on liquid mantle. One of the plates, uh, areas of confusion of plate tectonics is people think that the continents float on water. Uh, to your point, sir, I think Guam is a small island. Very Relative. small island. And my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. The, uh the Guam population, I think, currently about 175,000, and again, with 8,000 Marines and their families, it's an addition of about 25,000. That is not correct. It's not that they're floating on water. In fact, the water is above the crust itself. We are floating on what's below the crust, which is the mantle, this liquid mantle, magma. Okay, here is something that's super important for you to remember, that there are two different types of crust. And if you remember that and you know and for, are familiar with the two different types of crust, you're going to have a lot better understanding of how they interact once we get to plates coming together, plates moving apart, plates going da 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 da, da. So if you know the, about the two different types of crust, you are going to have a much better time understanding that. Now, the first one we're going to take a look at is continental crust. Hey, get back over here. Ooh, maybe I'll go up here. Okay, here's continental crust. And continental crust, if you take a look at it, you can get an idea of it. This is the continental crust. Here's the oceanic crust. Gee, I wonder why it's called oceanic crust. And you can see that they are different. Some of the differences are that the continental crust is clearly much thicker. And it's also less dense. This material is much less dense than this material. So if you can imagine the continental crust is very, very thick. But the oceanic crust squeezed together 
into a much smaller package, therefore it's much, much more dense. So imagine like taking a, a big piece of, of white bread and squeezing it together. You still have the same amount of bread, but it is much more dense after you have squeezed it together in a little ball. When I was a little kid, I used to do that all the time. I don't know if people do that, do that anymore, but to me it was fun. We didn't have video games and stuff, so we had to figure out ways to entertain ourselves. Plate boundaries are where the action is. So we need to know about plate boundaries. You know, plates themselves are interesting, but hey, not a whole lot going on in most of the plate. On the plate boundaries, however, lots and lots of action. Here are some plate boundaries. This is where two or more plates come together. So here you have two plates coming together here, but here you can see that there's three different plates touching in this area here. Some of the uh, real important ones that we will do, definitely talk about would be the Nazca plate, and this is a relatively smaller plate, and the Nazca plate in the South American plate. This is a plate boundary of some importance. Here's another plate boundary of some importance. The, the uh, Pacific plate and the Nazca plate are going to be interacting. Plate boundaries. And when these plates move, the edges of the plates interact with one another. Like I said, this is where the action is, the interaction of the two different plates cause a lot of interesting things to happen on our world. Plate boundaries are going to interact in three different ways. The first way we're going to talk about is called a divergent boundary. Divergent boundary. Now you may have heard this word like in uh, uh, recent novel and movies with the girl, I can't remember what her name is, but it's divergent. What's it called? Triss. Okay, Triss and her boyfriend four or something. So he's, yeah. But anyway, she's considered divergent and she goes away from all the rest of the boring, normal people. So she's a lot cooler and jumps off buildings and stuff. And, but anyways, plates moving apart is called divergent boundaries. So here you have two different plates. They're moving apart. It's divergent, a divergent boundary. In a divergent boundary, things change over time. So over a very, very long period of time, you're going to have a lot of different things going on. First of all, here's that liquid mantle. So here's crust. And here you see, in this case, it's a continental crust. So here's a plate that's going to be breaking apart and moving apart. There's pressure being built up here from the mantle and pushing these two plates apart. And over time, at this rift valley gets big enough it can start uh, collecting water and you get actually start getting a new ocean is born and then when the ocean is born you have in this area where the divergent boundary is this is a mid-ocean ridge and the mid-ocean ridges are of course very very important now here's one example this is the mid-atlantic ridge this is a divergent boundary and then over here the Nazca plate you have the Nazca plate here and the Pacific plate they're moving apart that's these are two important mid-ocean ridges there are certain geological features that you should expect at a divergent boundary this is the mid-ocean ridge and that is something you would expect to see at a divergent boundary so right here you have the mid-atlantic ridge Here you have a picture of the mapping of the ocean floor, and this mapping would have been done in what way? What process would be used to do this mapping? You should know this. This would be done with sound waves or sonar. Here's actual pictures of the mid-Atlantic Ridge. You'd have to use a submersible that's specifically designed to go down deep under the ocean. Uh, the, especially in the, the uh, Atlantic Ocean, I mean, you can get close to seven, almost seven miles deep. So just any old submarine that you just happen to have handy, eh, you know, I got a submarine, you know, that, that, that one's not going to be able to go down that deep. It has to be something specially made or it's going to be cr crushed by all the pressure. If you're talking continental crust breaking apart and being in a divergent zone, you're going to be looking at what's called a rift valley. Here is a very famous example of a rift valley. This is called the East African Rift Zone, conveniently located in East Africa. And this area is actually a divergent boundary 
So this part is moving this direction, this part is moving this direction, and it's growing larger and larger each year. Now it's not very much, you know, a couple centimeters, maybe an inch or so each year, but it is it is growing. And here you start to see some water forming in this area in the, in the Rift Valley, and eventually this is actually going to become a baby ocean and then become a new ocean. So if you want to get, some, get in on the ground floor of some uh, oceanfront property and you don't mind waiting a million years or so for your investment to pay off, Start buying up land right there. Okay, here's our old friend Iceland, and we know the significance of Iceland and mid-ocean ridges. You know that the mid-Atlantic ridge goes right through Iceland. And Iceland is currently going in this direction, one side. This side's going in that direction, getting a little bit bigger each year. And if you were able to look underneath the crust, you would see a large bulge of magma with pressure pushing up. There's rift valleys in Iceland formed, and the, uh, the crust is being pushed up in different directions. If you were actually there, you could see things like this. Here's a photo taken where the rift valley is. Nice pretty picture. Here you see that they actually put a bridge over the rift valley. At the divergent boundaries, you should expect to see mid-ocean ridges, you should expect to see rift valleys, and in addition to that, you should definitely expect to find volcanoes. Hey, take a look at this. Oh my goodness. Ah, volcanoes. Ah. And anyway, so here you see a rift valley. In the rift valley, you should definitely expect to find volcanoes. You, again, see the mantle, the liquid magma pushing up here, causing pressure, coming up near the surface. These plate boundaries being pushed away from one another, divergent, they're moving away from one another, and you should definitely find volcanoes in that area. Here we are back at our old friend, the East Africa Rift Valley. Sure enough, hey, volcanoes, surprise, surprise. Now, if volcanoes aren't enough excitement for you, we should definitely also expect to find earthquakes in the divergent boundaries. Here we go again, the East Africa Rift Valley, place to be for action if you like volcanoes and earthquakes. Let's take a look at a clip. At divergent margins, lithospheric plates move in opposite directions. The plates which include crust and part of the upper mantle, ride over the asthenosphere. As hot mantle rock rises to shallow depths, it begins to melt due to lowered pressure. This forms magma. Dense plutonic rock is created as the magma is injected into the crust. Small magma chambers form low in the crust. Less than one quarter of the magma ever reaches the surface to erupt as pillow lavas. As it moves away from the ridge, the cooling rock sits progressively lower than the hotter, more buoyant rock at the ridge. Like two giant conveyor belts, the plates transport newly formed oceanic crust away from the ridge crest at 3 to 10 centimeters per year. Okay, everybody, thanks for joining us. Next time we'll talk about convergent boundaries and then after that, transform boundaries. See you later. Bye. Be careful, kids. Bye. See ya.